A lot of you may know El Gifu from the show Vikings Valhalla. Here, she's presented to us as a calculating character with her own set of agendas. This noblewoman, who married a prince that later went on to become a king, should have become a queen. The politics of England in the 11th century were turbulent, as the throne of England was being fought over by several factions, the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings. El Gifu is largely known for being locked in a rivalry with Emma of Normandy, with both seeking to make their own son the heir of their husband. El Gifu would grow up in one of the most chaotic and unstable times in English history, with the Viking invasions overpowering Saxon power, and England becoming a different land. This is her story. Elf Gifu was born in the year 990. She was born into an important noble-based family in Mercia. She was the daughter of Aethelm, the elderman of Northumbria, and his wife Wolfram. However, when Elf Gifu was but a young woman, her father Aethelm was murdered and his sons were blinded by Edric Striona, with the blessing of the king. When Swain Forkbeard began his invasion in England in the year 1009, the family again would come under suspicion of treachery, and further family members were killed. Swain Forkbeard would soon take the whole of the north, with Earl Uhtred of Northumbria submitting to him and proclaiming him as king. Swain would marry his son Canute to Elf Gifu, in order to seal the loyalty of the North. Swain would prove to be a brilliant general, and would go on to govern England, but he only lasted five weeks on the throne, dying unexpectedly in February in the year 1014. The Elderman of England quickly sent for King Ethelred to come back from his exile, and he then sent an army to London, which forced Swain's son Canute to flee back to Denmark. Elf Gifu would give birth to two sons, Svein and Harold. King Ethelred would soon die, prompting Canute to raise his armies and sail for England. He would then take the land, just as his father Swain Forkbeard did, and would be crowned the King of England. King Canute became the undisputed King of England in 1016, after the death of Edmund Ironside. Elf Gifu must have been excited and overwhelmed when she heard that her husband was the King. It's possible that she was called up to London to take her position as queen. However, Elf Gifu must have been disappointed to hear that her husband had married Emma of Normandy. It was common practice for conquering kings to marry into an existing royal family, and that's what Canute did, taking the English queen Emma of Normandy, who had previously been married to Ethelred the Unready. Emma was over a decade older than Canute, and she may have gained influence over him. This was cemented by the birth of their son, Hearthcanute. Canute would treat Hearthcanute as his heir, even though he had two older male sons. In addition to this, Emma was crowned as Queen of England with Canute in 1017, and she enjoyed a much higher status than Elfgifu. Emma was no doubt Elfgifu's rival for her position in England, Elf Gifu's whereabouts are not recorded for most of Canute's reign. However, as well as being the King of England, Canute was also the King of Denmark and Norway, and when his regent in Norway died in 1030, he sent Elf Gifu and Svein, his oldest son by her, to Norway to rule. Svein would be the new king, and Elf Gifu his regent, ruling in his name. El Gifu would quickly develop a bad reputation for introducing new laws, as well as a number of new taxes. She made herself and other Danes in Norway very unpopular and created resentment. As well as Sven and El Gifu not being particularly liked, Tryggve the Pretender came to Norway with an army from England, saying he was the son of Olaf Tryggvason. Based on this, he was trying to claim the kingdom as his own. Svein raised an army, and the two fleets would meet off the island of Bokken. During the battle, Tryggve reportedly hurled javelins at his enemies with both hands simultaneously. Despite his celebrated skills, his forces were overwhelmed by Svein's fleet, with Tryggve himself being killed. 
However, this may have emboldened more attacks, and that same winter, Einar Eidredesson, an influential Norwegian noble, decided to travel to Garderike to get Olaf Haraldsson's son Magnus. Olaf Haraldsson at this point was a saint, was loved by the people, and a cult had developed around him. When his son Magnus came to Norway, the people sided with him and against the Danes. Sven then fled to Norway, where he died a short time after. The same year Elf Gifu would also lose her husband Knut the Great, who died in the year 1035. After Svein's death, Elf Gifu was left with only one remaining son, Harald, who was living in England. Elf Gifu was swift in returning to England, so she could be reunited with her son, and she may have been the driving force behind some of his actions. Although Emma of Normandy had announced that her son by Canute, Hearth Canute, was the heir, he was all the way in Denmark at the time of Canute's death. Elf Gifu's son Harald took the initiative, and soon after his father's death, he went to the Archbishop of Canterbury and demanded to be crowned the King of England. The Archbishop, however, refused to grant him the crown until a council be formed to see who should rule the realm. At Oxford, the Royal Council was held, where both Emma of Normandy and Elf Gifu may have been present. At the council, it was decided that although Hearth Canute was his father's heir, Harold, as the only son of Canute present in England, was to rule as regent until the return of his brother. Elf Gifu was hosting feasts and offering many gifts to nobles of the kingdom in order to win them over and support Harold as the undisputed king. As well as this, the fact that Hartha Canute had still not arrived in England strengthened Elf Gifu's cause, and in 1037, Harold was finally able to secure the English crown in his own name. This would drive Emma of Normandy into exile, with her future looking bleak. Elf Gifu finally had the upper hand and would rule England with her son, King Harold Harefoot. Emma, however, wouldn't give up so easily. Her and Hearthcanute would meet up with a fleet of ships, ready to invade England. However, in March of 1040, Harold would die, having only reigned as king for three years. After this, Elf Gifu disappears from the sources. With the death of her last son, she probably fled, knowing Emma of Normandy and her son Hearthcanute would come back and show her no mercy. Hartha Canute would be crowned the King of England, ending the power struggle between the two women. Canute the Great was at fault for causing the tension between his two wives and two sons. While he maintained both queens, allowing them separate spheres of influence over his North Sea Empire, they both secretly wanted their own sons to be in the position Canute was in, and they would play the game of politics in order to do so. However, all of their sons had short-lived reigns. Sven, Elf Gifu's first son, only ruled Norway for five years. Her second son, Harald Harefoot, only ruled England for three years. Hartha Canute ruled England for two years, apparently dying from an excessive drinking session. With the death of Hartha Canute, this ended the Danish line of kings in England, and Edward the Confessor, the son of Ethelred the Unready was to become the English king. He was the son of Emma of Normandy, but she never intended or groomed him to be king. Nevertheless, the line of Elf Gifu of Northampton was extinguished, and soon after, she disappeared from history. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.